Welcome to A Level Chemistry. Today we will go through the May June 2021 paper 12, which is the MCQ paper and the second uh, variant of the session. And while we go through the paper, I'll discuss some techniques that you can use dur- during the exams to get a good score. Now, before we delve into any questions, I would remind you that always read the questions properly because one mistake that I made when I was preparing for my AS levels was that I used to read the questions very fast and in a hurry and I always ended up missing something important in the question and that led to many silly mistakes. So, to get the best possible score, to avoid making any silly mistakes, read the question and you'll be able to do well. and another thing that i wanted to tell you was to read every single option because sometimes one answer seems very obvious and we really feel tempted to go with it but it's good practice to go through every option to make sure that you have definitely made an informed choice and and the correct choice so using these techniques let's start these questions question 1 which statement about the avogadro constant is correct It is the mass of one mole of any element. No, this is wrong because the Avogadro constant is a number, not a mass. And for the same reason, option B will be wrong as well. So we've narrowed it to C and D now. It is the number of atoms in one mole of neon. This seems to be right for the time being because uh, neon is a monoatomic gas. Avogadro constant is the number of particles in one mole. So for neon, it has to be the number of atoms in one mole. So this option seems to be right. But let's go through option D as well. It is the number of atoms in 12 grams of any element. This is wrong because it is the number of atoms in one mole, and one mole is not necessarily going to be 12 grams of any element. It is only 12 grams of carbon. So this statement is wrong as well. So option C is the correct answer. Question two: Which equation represents the first ionization energy of iodine? Stop there and think about the definition in your head before going through any of the options. and then go through the options to make sure that you actually get the right answer so the first ionization energy is when is the energy required to ionize one mole of the of gaseous atoms to form one mole of gaseous one uh, plus one ions uh, in the in under standard conditions so this means that we can cancel out option a right away because it's not one mole of gaseous atoms it is half mole of gaseous molecules and we are accepting an electron ionization is giving off an electron not accepting an electron and for the same reason we can cross out option b and we cross out option c as well because again it's i2 we we need i however and then option d you can see one mole of iodine atoms give one mole of uh, iodide ions plus one mole of electrons the right answer question 3 The structure represents the structures represent three compounds each with four carbon atoms per molecule. Which row is correct? So they have asked us for lowest boiling point to highest boiling point. We will not start reading the options. We will first try to decide this for ourselves and then find that in the options. So let's see what kind of interactions are happening here. X will have hydrogen bonds because of this OH group. Hydrogen bonds remember are very strong. Y will have permanent dipole dipole interactions because uh, it is polar but it can't form hydrogen bonds because we have uh, we don't have an OH group here. And then Z you can see there's an iron uh, there's an iron pair over here so it will be an ionic compound and if you remember ionic bonds are very very strong. So Z seems to be the largest followed by x which is hydrogen bonds followed by y which is the uh, which is only permanent dipole dipole interactions which are quite weak comparatively so we know the order is y x z from lowest to highest and that seems to be option b so we will go with that question 4 the structural formula of aline is shown what are approximate bond angles x y and z in the molecule of aline now we won't read the options again we'll try to figure it out for ourselves and then we'll find that in the answers so x it's an sp2 carbon atom so it has to be um uh it has to be 120 degrees here then y it's also an sp2 carbon so it has to be 120 degrees here because of the carbon carbon double bond so we know that x and y are 120 each and therefore we narrow we, we, we c is the only possible answer here for that but however good practice also see the bond angle at z to make sure we made the correct decision uh for z see the, this carbon is an sp3 carbon 109.5 degrees they've given us 109 perfect question 5 flask q contains 5 dm cube of helium 
at 12 kilopascals pressure flask r contains 10 dm cube of neon at 6 kilopascals pressure if the flasks are connected at constant temperature what is the final pressure so uh, in this question um, let's visualize what is happening let's say this is a flask of helium and it is connected to through a pipe or something which is closed initially to a bigger flask which has neon so this has neon this has helium and what we do is we open these ends and then the gases mix together and equi equilibrate and the, the total volume is basically the volume of f um, 5 dm cube plus 10 dm cube now uh, we know that the ideal gas equation is PV is equal to nRT. We'll assume the gases are ideal gases because they've not given us any other information. And what we can see from here is that they've not given us a temperature. They've only said that the flasks are connected at constant temperature. So T is, we, T is unknown and the number of moles is also unknown. So what we'll do is we'll make the subject the unknowns, N times T. And from the equation, we can see this is equal to PV over R from the ideal gas equation we know p we know v because we know the volume of each flask and we know r as well so we can use this to calculate n times t for helium and n times t for, for neon separately so for ne for helium n times t will be equal to 12000 into 5 into 10 to the power of minus 3 remember i've done 10 to the power of minus 3 because we are working with dm we, we need to convert everything to si units uh, to meter cube and not to dm cube so uh, sorry this is for neon not for helium i just uh, uh, i just made a silly mistake here it has to be um oh sorry this is correct this is for helium yeah now uh, 12,000 into 5 into 10 to the power minus 3 over 8.314 which is the ideal gas constant and the universal gas constant and this will give us a value of uh, 7.217 so n times t is equal to 7.217 for helium for neon we'll repeat this so n times t is equal to 6 into 10 to the power of 3 into 10 into 10 to the so we have run out of space here so I will Try to write a bit smaller into 10 into 10 power of minus 3 over 8.314 and this is equal to um, 14.43. So we have n times t for helium, we have n times t for neon and this is when they are completely separate. Now we've connected the two flasks and uh, what we are doing is that the, now the total volume V becomes 10 plus 5 which is 15 dm cube and the total n times t becomes n, time, n times t of helium plus n times n times t of neon so uh, now the new pressure from the ideal gas equation we know that p is equal to n r t over v we know that the total n times t is equal to 14.43 plus 7.217 and uh, that is going to be equal to right i've made another mistake here sorry it's not 14.43 for neon it's 7.217 so it's 7.217 so the total n times t is 14.43 because we add the two together this times 8.314 into um, we don't need t anymore because we've taken n times t directly is equal to 14.43 and this is over v the, the total volume which is 15 dm cube converted to meter cube remember si units and that gives us a pressure of 8000 pascals which is 8 kilopascals and that is option a so this was a cruel question because it was a bit lengthy, but there will not be many of these, so you will be able to save time in the other ones. Now question 6. Sodium chloride, uh, water and air represent three states of matter, solid, liquid and gas. Which row is correct? So we first only look at the column for sodium chloride because we can cross out any wrong answers. So we can automatically see that options b and c will be wrong because sodium chloride is an ionic solid the particles are not the particles um, the particles are held in a rigid structure they are not stationary but they are uh, held in a rigid structure and that's that means we are we narrow it down to a and d and then for water water is a liquid and remember liquids cannot be compressed and that automatically gives us answer d and then we look at the column for air to make sure we've chosen the correct choice it says can be can easily be compressed that's true air gases can be easily compressed 
Now let's go to question seven. The reaction pathway diagram for the catalyzed reaction and the uncatalyzed reaction between N2 and H2 is shown, and this gives to NH3, which le letter represents the activation energy for the first step in the decomposition of NH3 in the presence of a catalyst. So this is the reverse of this reaction. It is this direction that we are talking about. Now remember, the activation energy is the energy from the uh, reactant which in this case is NH3 and the product which is N2 and 3H2 remember we are looking at the reverse reaction and it says in the presence of a catalyst which means we'll follow the pathway with the lowest energy transition state and therefore the answer becomes D that is the activation energy in this case question 8 nitrogen and oxygen can react together to form nitrogen monoxide N2 plus O2 gives 2NO and we can see that the reaction is endothermic. What is the bond energy of the bond between the atoms in NO? Now your beloved uh, data book will come in come handy here in this question because you just it's a simple maths question where you take the NN bond energy in N2, you take the OO bond energy in O2, you add them together and you subtract twice the NO bond energy uh, we don't know if it's a double, triple or single bond. We don't really care right now. All we care is about what the bond energy is. So I'll just write it as NO. And this is equal to plus 180 because it's an endothermic reaction and they've given us the delta H. So we can make, uh, we can find this uh, N2 and O2 bond energies in the data book. And then we can make NO the subject. So NO is equal, the bond energy of NO is equal to NN plus OO minus 180 over 2 and this is equal to 944 plus 496 minus 180 the 944 and 496 I got from the data book over 2 and that is equal to 630 kilojoule per mole and that is option A. The equation for a redox reaction is shown uh, SNCl2 plus HgCl2 HgCl2 gives SNCl4 plus Hg2Cl2 which species is being oxidized in this reaction. Now, what we'll do is, for the chlorines, we, we see that for all uh, species, the oxidation state is minus 1, so B cannot be the answer. And then we look at, uh, we, we look at 10 mercury in each of the species and see what's happening there. So minus 1 for 1 chlorine, so minus 2 for total 2 chlorines, and plus 2 for the 10. And that means on the left-hand side, we have SN2+, and then minus 2 for 2 chlorines, plus 2 for Hg, so on the right hand side we have Hg2+, plus. and then SNCl4, Cl4, uh, four, uh, minus 4, minus 1 into 4, and that gives us Sn4+, plus, and that's Sn4, plus four. and that automatically uh, gives us answer as Sn2+, plus because Sn2+, plus is being oxidized to Sn4+, plus. but for good practice we, we will check what's happening to mercury, Cl2, minus 2, Hg2, should be plus 1 because it's a, overall it's a neutral species so plus 1 into 2 will give you total plus 2 plus 2 minus 2 is 0 so the total is plus 2 but because there are two atoms of Hg we divide it by 2 so we get plus 1 for each Hg so the mercury is going from plus 2 to plus 1 and therefore it is not being oxidized it is reduced so that's why A is definitely the correct answer question 10 3.60 moles of hydrogen gas and 2.00 moles of iodine vapor are placed in a reaction vessel which is then sealed and maintained at a constant temperature. So they've given us the equation for the reaction. At equilibrium, 3.20 moles of hydrogen remain. All reactants and products are gaseous. Right. What is the Kp of uh, what is the value of Kp under these conditions? So whenever you see these equilibrium questions with the values given, always draw up a table because it really makes your life easier. So I'll have two rows which are initial, which is before the reaction took place, and final, which is after it reached equilibrium, and then I'll have three columns, one for each species. Right, so initially we have 3.60 moles of hydrogen gas, we have 2.00 moles of iodine vapor, and we have 0 moles of hyd hydrogen iodide because they haven't given us anything else. 
and then finally they say that we have 3.20 moles of hydrogen at equilibrium which means that 0.4 moles of hydrogen reacted and because hydrogen and iodine react in a 1 is to 1 ratio 0.4 moles of iodine reacted so we have 1.60 moles of iodine left and because Hydrogen produces hydrogen iodide in a 1 is to 2 ratio. 0.4 moles of hydrogen produce 0.8 moles of hydrogen iodide. So we have 0.80 on this side. So the total moles is equal to uh, 3.2 plus 1.6 plus 0.8 at equilibrium which is 5.60. And then we can calculate the mole fractions which will be for HI. 0.8 over 5.60 which is 0.143 for I2 1.6 over 5.60 which is equal to 0.286 and H2 3.20 over 5.60 which is equal to um, 0.571 and Kp is now we, d we don't need the total pressure here because you'll immediately think now that we have to multiply the mole fraction by the total pressure but if you think about it the equation for Kp is P uh, which is the partial pressure of Hi squared over P I2 into P H2 so if you see the total pressure uh, because the mole fraction into the total pressure uh, w will be uh, 0. 1, 4, 3, let's say the total pressure is P, so P squared over um, 0 0.286 into 0 0.571 P squared because P from each becomes P squared and the P squared P squared cancels out so you don't need the total pressure and when you calculate this, uh, sorry you have to square the 0 0.143 as well, sorry and then um, when you calculate this you get 0 0.125 and that's option B. Question 11. Two chemicals X and Y react together in solution to give product Z. The rate of formation of product Z at the start of the reaction was measured in five experiments, one to five, using various concentrations of X and Y, and they've given us the table. Which statement is correct? The rate of the reaction is directly proportional to the concentration of X. So let's look at rows 1 and rows 4 because the concentration of reagent Y remains constant whereas the concentration of reagent X doubles. So as the concentration of reagent X doubles and Y is constant, the rate remains constant which means that the rate is not directly proportional to the concentration of reagent X. Um, the rate is not dependent of the concentration of X. So we cancel this option out and we also uh, see that option C is that the rate of the reaction is not affected by the concentration of X which is a plausible answer. So we know that C is a likely candidate for this question. And then the second option, the rate of the reaction is directly proportional to the concentration of reagent Y. Use the same method, keep X constant which is experiment number 1 and 2 and we are doubling Y and as we double Y Z increases the, the, the rate of formation of Z increases by four times so it is not directly proportional to Y uh, to reagent Y it is directly proportional to the square of the concentration of reagent Y because as you double reagent Y the rate of formation of Z does not double it increases by four times so 2 squared is equal to 4 so it is proportional to concentration of Y squared not to the concentration of Y itself so we cross this out and then Option D is that the rate of reaction is not affected by the concentration of reagent Y. This is wrong completely because you can see as you double concentration of Y and keep X constant, the rate changes. So that leaves us with C. Question 12. A sample of SiCl4 is added to water. Which statement describes the mixture formed at the end of the reaction? Now before reading the statements, let we know what happens to SiCl4 in water. So let's, let's just write the reaction down. So SiCl4 plus 2H2O gives SiO2 plus 4HCl. We already know this. And we know that SiO2 is insoluble in water. So it is a white precipitate. And that's why uh, we get we, we narrow it down to B and D. And uh, we know that HCl is acidic, obviously. So the answer will be B. Question 13. L and M are elements in period 3 of the periodic table. The oxide of L is a solid at room temperature. This oxide has a giant structure. The chloride of L does not react with water. 
So before we proceed to the third statement, let's see what we can figure out about L from the, fir from the first two statements. So we know that the chloride does not re react with water and we know that the oxide is a solid at room temperature and the oxide has a giant structure. It can be giant ionic, giant molecular. So, but we know that this has to be either Na or Mg because sodium chloride or magnesium chloride, they don't react with water, they just dissolve in water. These two are, these are two very different things. Reactions means that some product is formed. Dissolving is just that the ions just dissociate in solution. So, uh, and, and we know that the oxides of both of these compounds are giant ionic and that's, and, that, and basically Na and Mg satisfy both the statements. So we know that L has to be Na or Mg. So we already narrowed the question down to uh, the, the answer down to B and C. Then argon is the only element in period 3 with a lower melting point than M. Now remember, um, uh, for, for, uh, argon is a noble gas, it is to the extreme right of the period and M therefore has to be a non-metal which is not very polar for um, uh, so uh, the polarity doesn't sorry the polarity doesn't depend but it, it says that argon is the only element in period 3 with a lower melting point than m so the answer has to be d in uh, sorry the answer has to be c in this case we narrowed it down to b and c already because before argon there is sulf uh, there is chlorine not sulfur sulfur is even before chlorine and um, sulfur has a higher melting point definitely uh, much higher melting uh, melting point so uh, it so that's why the answer should definitely be c in this case it has to be a m has to be a halogen and then question 14 a farmer requires a solid compound to raise the ph of the soil in a field from 5.5 to 6.0 which compound could the farmer use now to raise the ph you need to add an alkali and you straight away see calcium hydroxide it has to be the answer because it is alkaline and remember calcium nitrate is neither acidic nor alkaline so it cannot be the answer and ammonium salts they react with alkalis so definitely they won't re raise the pH of the soil because if they react with alkalis, they are acidic in nature to some, to some extent and therefore these will lower the pH, not raise the pH, so it has to be C. Now question 15, Z is an anhydrous compound of a group 2 element. When it is heated, Z undergoes thermal decomposition to produce two different gases. Now let's stop right there. Let's read the options. Barium carbonate, barium nitrate, magnesium carbonate, magnesium nitrate. Now, when a carbonate decomposes, it produces only one gas, carbon dioxide. When a nitrate decomposes, we get two gases, nitrogen dioxide and oxygen. So, it, the question says two different gases. We narrow the question down to D and D already. Now, let's read the rest of the question. Z has relatively low thermal stability compared to other group 2 compounds containing the same anion as Z. So this means that D has to be the correct answer because the magnesium ion has a higher charge density and therefore greater ion polarization and therefore low thermal stability. So the answer is D. Which row gives mixtures that both result in the oxidation of a halide ion? So oxidation of a halide ion means the halogen is formed. Now, if you look at mixture one, um, it says AgNO3 plus NaCl. The halide ion is not oxidized because you get AgCl, which also contains chloride ions. So no chlorine is formed. So we already uh, cancel this out at the very first statement. We don't even have to read the statement for mixture two. Then Br2 and NaCl. Now, bromine is less reactive than chlorine, so it cannot, it cannot displace chlorine from its salt solution and therefore we will not have any Cl2 formed and we can cross this out. And then we look at the third statement, Cl2 and Br, NaBr, chlorine, um, is, um, chlorine is, more, uh, is more reactive than bromine, so it will displace bromine to form B, uh, bromide ions to form Br2 and therefore there will be a hox oxidation of a halide ion and this is a this is a likely answer now let's read the statement for mixture 2 ch3 ch br ch3 which is uh, 2 bromopropane plus naoh ethanolic now 
this is an elimination reaction and uh, we get Br negative ions because we get NaBr as one of the products. So there is no oxidation of Br negative, no Br2 formed. So this cannot be the answer, which means D has to be the answer, but we'll make sure why it is. And uh, Br2 and NaI, we'll make sure why, we, we know why it is the answer, sorry. Br2 and NaI, Br2, more, bromine more reactive than iodine, it will displace iodide ions to from, form I2 and that's why oxidation will take place. And then we read the second statement, concentrated S2SO4 and NaBr, this also takes place because we get bromide, bromine, um, liquid bromine, Br2 and that's why this is also correct, so D is the correct answer. Question 17. Chlorine gas is widely used to treat contaminated water. When chlorine is added to water, which chemical species present is responsible for killing bacteria? This is book work. You know it is chlorate ions because remember when we add chlorine to uh, water, we get NaClO as one of the products. Sorry, not NaClO. I mean a ClO negative ions as one of the products. Uh, and that's why this has to be one of the, un uh, this has to be the answer. What is an environmental consequence of the uncontrolled use of nitrate fertilizers? Before you del delve into the uh, question, uh, we remember from our notes that it is uh, that nitrate fertilizers they go into the water stream and they cause eutrophication, in which they prevent uh, they, they 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 cause the rapid growth of algae, which cause which which depletes the oxygen levels in water, and the only option that gives that is option B. So that's done. Question 19. Ammonia gas, NH3, and hydrogen sulfide gas, H2S, react together to form the salt ammonium sulfide, NH4 told twice S. Ammonium sulfide dissolves in water to produce an orange alkaline solution. The addition of NaOH to the solution produces a gas X. Now, let's stop right there. NaOH is an alkali. It will not react with NH3 because NH3 is another alkali, but we know that alkalis react with ammonium compounds. So we'll write an equation for this reaction right away. NaOH gives NH3 plus NaSH plus H2O. And um, so we give that, we get that, and then. Um, uh, and th th this gives up gas X, ammonia gas, gas X. So this has to be option C or D. We already narrow it down. And then the addition of HCl to a separate portion of the solution produces a gas Y. What will HCl react with? HCl will react with um, uh, HCl will react with NH3 aqueous, and it will also react with um, NH4SH. Now let's see how HCl plus NH4SH gives NH4Cl plus H2S. So we get this because we just get, get it by balancing and hence the answer is C which is H2S. Now question 20. Compound P is treated with an excess of hydrogen gas in the presence of uh, a nickel catalyst. The product Q is fully saturated. So uh, uh, we have compound P, nickel, uh, hydrogen gas in the presence of nickel catalyst. That means all alkene groups are being hydrogenated. So we draw the compound Q and then we'll see how many, num how many chiral carbon atoms are there in compound Q. So we just draw the same thing but without the double bonds. Yeah, so uh, now we have to calculate the number of chiral carbon atoms. This is chiral, so that's one. This is chiral, so that's two. Not chiral, not chiral. This is chiral, that's three. Not chiral, not chiral. And um, not chiral. This is chiral, so that's four. Not chiral, not chiral. This is chiral, that's five. Not chiral, not chiral, not chiral, not chiral not chiral. Remember chiral carbon atoms are atoms that are attached to four different groups. So we have five of these and the answer is therefore B. Question 21. 
Hexa uh, Deca 1012 diene 1 ol is produced by silk moths from hexa decanoic acid in a three step enzymatic process. So, which row contains correct descriptions of the three steps? Now, before we read the options, let's figure it out for ourselves. Step 1 the acid groups remains intact, uh, a group remains intact, and we get an alkene group, which means it's a uh, it's an elimination reaction or a dehydrogenation reaction or um, we can also call it an oxidation reaction actually it will oxidation is a better word elimination is not a good word for this reaction because um, elimination when is when is when a leaving group is released here we don't have a leaving group hydrogen is not considered to be a leaving group and because we are removing hydrogen remember oxidation is the loss of hydrogens so oxidation is a better word step 2 the acid group remains intact again and we have another alkene so that is another oxidation step 3 the acid group goes from acid to alcohol which is a reduction reaction remember so this is reduction so it is oxidation oxidation reduction and that is option D compound X can be converted uh, into compound Y in a single step okay so x to y what could be the identity of x so let's look at the number of carbon atoms in compound y because remember uh, so some of these options may have a different number of carbon atoms so we can cancel them out immediately so 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 and that's 7 carbon atoms let's count them in each of them 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So A and B are good candidates for now. And 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Not a good candidate. 8 carbon atoms, not possible. And then 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Again, not possible. Then we look at A and B. We know that we want to form a ketone and we want to form a carboxylic acid. And because these two are alkenes, we know that the oxidation of the alkene will give will give will give these two groups so for ketone we need two r groups this will form a ketone this will form a carboxylic acid this will form a ketone this will form a carboxylic acid but now if you see this part of the molecule here the al the alkyl group the methyl group is one carbon atom away from the carboxylic acid and that is option a in option b it is two carbon atoms away so you have to go from here to here but here you go only one carbon away and that's why it has to be option a question 23 methane and bromine react by free radical substitution p and q are involved in the reaction mechanism p and q are both involved in propagation steps as reactants underline this and are both involved in termination steps as reactants underline this so what could be p and q so uh, br and h no uh, i don't think of them as reactants really so uh, they won't be involved then option b br and ch3 yes br from the bromine ch3 from the methane so plausible answer br and c2h6 Again, this is not a propagation step. The C2H6 is not really a reactant here. And the C2H6 is probably a product of two uh, CH3 radicals joining together. So unlikely. And then D, CH3 and CH3Br. Again, this is not a reactant. This is one of the products. So cannot be the answer. Answer is B. A few drops of 2-bromopropane were placed in a test tube. An equal volume of aqueous silver nitrate was added and a precipitate was formed. The experiment was repeated with 2 iodopropane. Which row is correct? Color of precipitate with 2 bromopropane plus AgNO3. This is book work. We know it has to be a cream precipitate of AgBr. And so we, we have narrowed it down to A and C. And the faster rate of reaction, the faster rate of reaction will be with uh, the iod iodopropane because remember the CI bond is weaker than the CBr bond and therefore it will be easy, more easily broken. Question 25. Sodium methoxide Na plus CH3O negative reacts with 2 chloro 2 methylpropane in a nucleophilic substitution reaction. And the nucleophile is the CH3O negative ion. Which row is correct? So before we delve into anything, it is always a good idea to draw the structure of this react of the reactants because it will give us a clearer picture of what is happening in this reaction. So CH3, C, CH3, 
CH3, Cl, this is 2 chloro 2 methylpropane, 1, 2, 3, and you can see this fits the description. And if you think about this, it's a, this is a three. This will form a three degree carbo, uh, carb, carbocation, which is stable because it has three carbon atoms attached to it. So therefore, this reaction will be an SN1. The nucleophilic substitution will be an SN1 and not an SN2, which automatically brings us to A and B. We don't have to look at C and D. And the product. Um, the CH3O negative, so uh, let's draw the mechanism. The Cl negative will, re uh, will leave. We'll get this. Um, uh, we'll get we'll get this carbocation, and then the CH3O negative, which is the nucleophile, will attack this carbon atom, and that's why we'll get um, this answer. We'll get we'll get option A, which is CH3 whole thrice C COCH3, which is basically. Uh, the CH3O group, which was the nucleophile, is attached to the carbocation. 26. Alcohol X reacts with concentrated sulfuric acid to produce a mixture of products. Two of the products are structural isomers of each other. Now, what is happening here? Before we read the options, um, when an alcohol is reacted with concentrated sulfuric acid, we get a dehydration reaction in which an alkene is formed and two of the products are structural isomers of each other. So, we want to get two structural isomer products and let's go through each option to make sure we get them. So, option A, CH3, CH2, 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 CH, OH, CH3, this is hexane to all. This will dehydrate, so it can either form an alkene between these two carbon atoms or between these two carbon atoms. So, we do get two structural isomers. So I'm not going to draw them, but you can see that the elimination can either happen, the, the hydrogen can be eliminated from either this one or from either this one. So you have the, uh, two uh, positions for the double bond and therefore two structural isomers. A is a good candidate. Pentane, one all. CH3, CH2, 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 CH2OH. And if you see, the only double bond that can form here is between these two. So you only get one product. And that's why this cannot be the answer. Pentane 3 all, CH3, CH2, CH2, uh, sorry, CHOH, CH2, CH3. Now, you can get a double bond between these two or these two, but in either case, the product will be the same because you can count it from the opposite direction. So, you get the same product and that's why C can also not be the answer. And then propane 2 all, CH3, CHOH. CH3. Again, you can get a double bond here or you can get a double bond here, but again, it will be the same thing. So, this cannot be the answer. Answer is A. Question 27. Which reaction will form a strong organic base? Now, underline strong, underline organic, underline base. Ethanol and acidified dichromate. Um, this will not give a strong organic base because uh, sorry so acidified sodium dichromate yeah so this will not give a base because um, the ethanol will be uh, uh, will be oxidized to ethanoic acid and because sodium dichromate is an oxidizing agent and uh, ethanoic acid is not a base it's an acid so obviously this cannot be the answer ethanol and hot aluminium oxide uh, this is a dehydration reaction. It will give you ethene, which is an alkene. And alkenes are obviously not basic. They are, ne they are neither acidic nor basic. Cancel this out. Ethanol and sodium will give you sodium ethanoate, which will contain CH3, CH, uh, CH2, O negative ions, ethanoate ions. And because of the negative charge on the oxygen, they can accept H plus ions and therefore they can act as a bronsted lowry base. So this is a good candidate for the answer. Then option D, ethanol and hydrogen chloride. This gives you chloroethane, which is um, it's a nucleophilic substitution reaction. It will give you chloroethane. It is not basic. Cancel this out. Op answer is C. Question number 28. Which reaction mechanism for the formation of C2H5CHOHCN is correct? So we go through each option again. Uh, this is a nucleophilic addition from what we can see. And if you look at option A, it's wrong because the lone pair uh, uh, option A is wrong because if you look at the second step, the hydrogen plus cannot attack the oxygen. The oxygen has to attack the hydrogen plus. Remember, it's always the electro electron rich species that attacks. 
so this cannot be possible then option b um, this is wrong because obviously this doesn't make sense uh, again uh, the negatively charged species will be more likely to attack and the carbonyl um, the oxygen lone pair attacking nah doesn't seem right and then option c um, this is also wrong because it says that the delta plus is on oxygen and the delta negative is on carbon which is not possible because oxygen is more electronegative so this is wrong which leaves us with option d for the correct answer and let's see why it is correct um, uh, the, carb the lone pair on the carbon attacks the delta plus carbon, that's correct. Electrons go on to the carbonyl oxygen, that's also correct, which is delta negative. The lone pair on the oxygen attacks the H plus, also correct, so this is the correct answer. Question 29. The synthesis shown may be used for the production of propane, one all. So they've given us this synthesis. Which row gives the correct reagents for steps 1 and 2? So before we go on to the reagents, let's see what is happening when one compound X is formed. So we have a nitrile group and we end with an alcohol group. And the best thing that comes to your mind is that the nitrile hydrolyzes to form a carboxylic acid, which will be um, propanoic acid. And the propanoic acid will be reduced to form propanol. So step one is an acid is an is an acid hydrolysis. So it has to be this. Remember, it cannot be a base hydrolysis because the base will deprotonate this and give us um, these ions, and these ions cannot be reduced. Only the acid can be reduced. So we narrow it down to A and B, and then we reduce the al uh, the carboxylic acid. Remember, lithium aluminium hydride is used to uh, reduce carboxylic acids. So option B. Now we get on to question 30. The molecular formula of Z is C4H8O. The infrared spectrum of Z is shown. Now again, before we go into the question, let's interpret the spectrum and let's uh, see what's happening. So this is OH because broad, about 3500, yeah. Uh, CH and then this one, it's a, it's a, it's a weak uh, or to medium intensity sharp peak. Uh, CC double bonds and uh, about 1300 uh, ish over here CO single bonds so we have that now what could be Z not A because we don't have any carbonyl peaks um, it could be B but again uh, there's no alkene so it cannot be B but uh, if you look at C again, no carbonyl, so cannot be C. D has alkene, has OH. Let's go with this. Then we come to section B. Uh, here are some rules that you use to answer the questions. I'm not sure if the structure is the same these days, but uh, let's just solve these. In which ions are the number of electrons equal to the number of neutrons? So... The number of electrons in the first one is equal to 10 because 9 protons negative charge so electrons 10 and the number of neutrons is 19 minus 9 which is also 10 so we go, one is one of the correct is one is the correct answer for one of the correct answers then for the second one the number of protons is 15 but the number of electrons is 16 because of the negative charge and the number of neutrons is 31 minus 15 which is also 16 and that's also one of the correct answers and then for sodium ions Na plus the number of electrons is 11 minus 1 because of the positive charge which is 10 uh, sorry electrons is equal to 10 and the number of neutrons is 23 minus 11 which is equal to 12 so this is not the correct answer so we go with B question 32 Compound X is a straight chain hydrocarbon with an MR of 84. And what can be determined about X? So it's a straight chain hydrocarbon, which means it can either be an alkene or an alkane. Uh, alkene will have formula CX, H, 2X. Alkene will have the formula CX, H, 2X plus 2. So we can easily figure out using the molecular formula. The, uh, the, uh, the empirical formula and therefore we can figure out this and we can if we can figure out the empirical formula and we have the MR we can figure out the molecular formula and then whether X contains a CC double bond or not we know it is a straight chain hydrocarbon so if it is an alkene we know it contains a CC double bond and therefore this is correct as well 
So we go with A. Then question 33. When a sample of ammonium chloride is warmed, it decomposes into ammonia and hydrogen. When the mixture is hot, ammonia and hydrogen chloride gases hit a cold surface, a white solid ammonia ammonium chloride reforms. Okay. And which statements are correct? Reaction 1 is in dynamic equilibrium. Now this sounds tempting because you would think that when you heat up the uh, ammonium chloride, you form these two things. These will travel up, they will hit the cold surface, they will reform ammonium chloride. So the reaction is in equilibrium. But that indeed is not correct because um, equilibrium means that there are there are certain numbers of NH, amounts of NH3, HCl and NH4Cl at all times. But if you think about it, there's only NH4Cl at all times because uh, the NH3 and HCl that are produced eventually form NH4Cl and the other thing is that they're not formed in the single vessel. These are two different systems right there so it cannot be in dynamic equilibrium. Then the second is reaction one is reversible. Indeed it is because that's why uh, the ammonium chloride forms here. So it is reversible. Reaction 1 is an endothermic reaction, that is correct, because it is a decomposition reaction, all decomposition reactions are endothermic, so we go with C. Then hydrogen chloride gas is formed by the reaction shown, what will change the average kinetic energy of the reacting gas particles? So increasing the temperature and increasing the concentration of hydrogen. So um, for this one, this is correct because increasing the temperature, not increasing the concentration won't uh, change the average kinetic energy, but increasing the temperature will definitely change the average kinetic energy. So this is correct. Cooling the reaction um, mixture and adding a catalyst. Um, this will also change the kinetic energy because we are cooling the reaction mixture, not because we are adding a catalyst, but because we are cooling the reaction mixture as well. And then the last one. Adding a catalyst and increasing the concentration of chlorine, neither adding a catalyst nor increasing the concentration will increase the uh, average kinetic energy because that's solely temperature dependent and therefore uh, this is not correct. So the answer will be B. Question number 35. Which oxides will, change, uh, will cause a change in pH when added to water? Calcium oxide, yes, because it will form calcium hydroxide and that's alkaline, so the pH will increase. Al2O3, no, because it will not dissolve in water in the first place. And SiO2, again, no, because it won't dissolve in water. So the answer will be D. Question 36, which reaction routes can be used to make a pure sample of barium sulfate? Okay, so we go through each route and see what happens. Barium, heat it in oxygen, we get barium oxide. Add it to dilute HCl, barium oxide is, an, uh, is a base, remember. Add it, to, add it to dilute HCl, you will get BaCl2. And then you add it to dilute H2SO4, which will form BaSO4. And when you filter, wash and dry, you will make pure barium sulfate, so this is correct. Let's go through the second one. BaNO3 hold twice, heat in air, you will get barium oxide again. An excess of water, you'll get barium hydroxide, which it, barium oxide will dissolve in water properly. Uh, add to di uh, dilute, dilute SO4. Again, you get a white precipitate of barium sulfate, uh, as you got here. So, and you filter, wash, and dry, you get uh, pure barium sulfate. And then the last one. Dilute HNO3, you add barium hydroxide, uh, BaNO3, whole twice will form. And um, you add it to dilute H2SO4, again, barium sulfate precipitate will form. Filter, wash and dry, correct. So remember, barium oxide soluble, barium chloride soluble, barium sulfate insoluble, that's why you were able to separate the white precipitate. Barium oxide soluble, barium hydroxide soluble, barium sulfate insoluble, white precipitate, so you can separate it out. Barium nit nitrate soluble, barium sulfate insoluble and therefore you uh, separate the precipitate so all three correct a question 37 cortisone is a synthetic hormone right so they've given cortisone which classes of alcohol does this molecule contain so we can see a secondary alcohol here because uh, this carbon is bonded to two others 
we see a tertiary alcohol here because this carbon is bonded to three others and then we see a primary alcohol here because this carbon is bonded to only one other carbon so we have primary ter secondary and tertiary all three so all three correct and therefore a which changes are commonly involved in the formation of an addition polymer the formation of a sigma bond yes because remember when you're forming an addition polymer between c uh, h2c ch2 and h2c ch2 you'll get an addition polymer between these two carbons uh, you'll get sorry you'll get a sigma bond between these two carbons sorry breaking of a pi bond yes because you break the cc double bond you break the pi bond and this is also correct the change in hybridization of the orbitals of a carbon atom from sp2 to sp3 this is also absolutely right because it is sp2 in the alkene but in the polymer you have something like this and these are bonded to other groups so they are sp3 carbons because there are no double bonds and therefore this is correct as well answer is a now we move on to the penultimate question, uh, question 39, which, al which alcohols can be oxidized to form an organic compound which will give colored precipitates with 2,4-DNPH and alkaline aqueous iodine, has to give with both, remember. So we start with the first one. It, uh, so um, these can be ox uh, so this one will be, this will be oxidized to uh, a ketone uh, and the ketone will be this now it will react with 2,4 dnph because obviously it's uh, a ketone but it won't react with alkaline aqueous iodine because it does not have ch3co right so this is wrong and then in the second option uh, you have again another secondary alcohol group which will be oxidized to a ketone So the ke both ketone groups will react with 2,4 dnph to give the colored precipitate and uh, this ketone group because it is CH3CO it will react with alkaline aqueous iodine so this is correct and then for the third one you get this on oxidation the ketone group with, will react with 2,4 dnph and will also react with alkaline aqueous iodine because again it's CH3CO so this is correct as well we have C and then question 40 which mixtures form a carboxylic acid as one of the products so um, this is an ester reacts with H2SO4 uh, acid hydrolysis this will give an alcohol which is this one plus uh, a carboxylic acid which is this one and uh, because we get a carboxylic acid this one is correct then this one um, it's a carboxylate ion but the uh, and it is reacting with an acid so the acid will donate a proton to this O negative and this will give us this acid and uh, that obviously is the correct answer and then H2SO4 plus this aldehyde, no, uh, it won't give an acid because this is not really a reaction. So there is no reaction happening here essentially and you can cancel this out. So this will be B. So this was um, the 2021 uh, summer uh, paper 12, May, June uh, paper 12 for 2021. And I hope these things made sense. Thank you for watching. See you next time.